Well, good morning and welcome to this latest Facebook Live from Singer Sewing Machines. We're here with our special guest, Juliet Uzor. Juliet, as you know, was the winner of the 2019 Great British Sewing Bee on BBC Two. Since winning, she's stepped away from her job as a primary school teacher to focus on developing her sewing activities. <laughs> Self-taught, she's been sewing for five years, is that correct? Uh, six years now. Six it's years now. Mainly occasion and day wear for herself, family and friends. Uh, before taking the plunge to put herself forward for the sewing bee and her ambition now through her own blog and through working with brands like us is to share her love for sewing and to teach as many young people as possible how to sew for themselves. Um, a little bit later we're going to be asking Juliet some of the questions that some of you have emailed in but first we want to get started and find out tell me about that sewing journey how, how did you begin how did you get started? Um, I started so in 2013 when I guess it's just my curious nature wanting to know how things are made um, I went into Hobbycraft and purchased uh, <laughs> a very basic sewing machine that um, <laughs> I used to uh, I think it, I used it to create a tote bag it was a tote bag that I saw either a tote bag or a very simple shift dress and it was awful <laughs> it was awful I actually it was the DVD that came along with the sewing machine that I used to learn how to operate it so I didn't have the luxury of you know a parent or a grandparent teaching me to sew and um, it all just started that way and um, I just I guess just carried on and on and on and so the early stuff that you were making were, were, were clothes Yes, I mean, it, mainly bags. I started off with bags mm -hmm. and then took the plunge to go ahead and make um, clothes for myself. And it was mainly um, just for myself and um, my daughter, who, well, she was a baby at the time. And um, yeah, that's how it all started. And just the whole idea of being able to create something for myself that wasn't exactly what I saw on the high street in the sort of fabrics that I love, colourful, vibrant, you know, patterned fabrics, bold. And how long before family and friends were saying, can you make something for me? <laughs> um, I was a bit of a selfish sewer at the time. <laughs> um, it was maybe a year later that people thought, actually, you're good at this thing, help me make this. Or, or you know, actually, I, um, I did make a few bags for colleagues at work because as a teacher, you know, we like to have bags to take books home to mark and that sort of thing. So I did make a couple of tote bags as gifts to colleagues at work. Um, yeah, and that's how it all started. And do, I mean, do you find it relaxing? Is oh, it? Sewing is my happy place. I mean, I could sew till you know, late, early hours of the morning actually, and not really feel like going to bed. It's just, it's so relaxing, I enjoy it, and it's like therapy for me. Um, no matter how tough the day's been, once I get into my sewing room, I just feel this thing that takes over me, and I'm, you know, unless I find something really tricky, I need to put it away, go to sleep, and come back with fresh eyes back to it. But I really do enjoy sewing. Oh, that's good. So now we'll, we'll talk about sewing bee in a second. Mm -hmm. You were explaining to me that you, you basically learned online. I did. I did learn to sew online. Um, there were, you know, apart from the DVD that came along that showed just to how, just how to operate the machine, I watched a lot of videos on YouTube showing how to create basic tote bags and um, how to make, how to assemble the sewing pattern. PDF patterns I started off with, how to assemble them, how to use them to actually create a garment. It was this lady called Angela Kane on YouTube. I stuck the very first thing I made was a shift dress from her. It was a free PDF, and um, it all just started that way. Online, um, you know, videos. Um, at the time, Instagram wasn't re didn't really have much content on sewing. Um, but there were lots of videos on YouTube, there were bloggers, lots of bloggers who did share 
their knowledge on 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 their blogs. Um, I mean, Tilly and the Buttons mm -hmm. then brought out her patterns, and it all just took off took off from there. And you're trying to do that now. I mean, you're you're a big yeah. big social media person. Yeah, I enjoy social media. Um, I like to share. I really do love to share and teach people. I mean, I'm a teacher, <laughs> but yeah. well, now I'm teaching people how to do something that I really love. So it's it's a win win. Mm. I love to share to young people. There are lots of young people who are you know starting their journey um, people who want to you know people who want to create things for themselves or for their children just really sharing and giving back online um, yeah so there's a big hop skip and a jump a big leap between learning and starting out to, to sew online in 2013 and then applying for the 2019 <laughs> Great British Sewing Bee yeah. how and where, where did how did you get from one to the other I mean, I watched, I, wa I think it was when I started this, to sew that I think I started to sew after the first um, series of the first series of um, the Great British Sewing Bee. That kind of spurred me on as well. But um, in 20, 2018, a friend of mine, Nikki Cook, who is a pattern maker, um, <laughs> she sent me an ad on Facebook saying, you know, this thing's out. It's coming back with sewing bee. I think you should go on it. I didn't take her serious. I didn't, I didn't want to go. I didn't want to do it at the time. But then she sent it to me again a day before the deadline. I thought, you know what, I'm just going to do it to shut her up. And it was a day. I filled it on, it was, I think the deadline was on a bank holiday Monday, back, you know, early spring last year. I thought, yeah, let's just do it and keep quiet. I didn't, you know, at every point, I kept getting through, you know, every stage of it. And I thought, wow, maybe, maybe I've got a chance of getting on this so, thing. So talk us through <laughs> that process, the moment from, from sending that application in to the moment finding out that you're going to be on the show. Oh. What, what is that? What, what happens in that process? Um, oh, the process. Very, it's a very, um, you know, it's a very detailed process, very, um, you know, there are lots of stages. Um, we went. We had auditions. For, well, first of, of all, we had a telephone application, a telephone interview. That I thought, yeah, no one's gonna. <laughs> this is. But I got through it. I got through a telephone interview. Got through the audition. Actual, you know, face to face um, audition. Got through. There were. I think there were three auditions or four. I can't remember. But um, there were. Um, you know, each at each stage. I thought, yeah, we'll just wing it and see how it goes. There are lots of people who've been sewing from many years ago whose parents have taught them to sew and have been doing this from when they were little. They're going to be way better than me, but let's just see how it goes. And, um, you know, at each stage I got through. So I, I thought, well, okay, maybe I stand a chance of actually making it onto the show. And um, it was quite, um, I was quite pleased. I'm not quite, I was very pleased to actually get selected. And then it hit me, <laughs> you're actually going to be on this thing, on so TV. <laughs> did, did, did your family and friends know at that point that you were going to be on mm, it? Apart from my husband, yeah. no one else knew that I was... A, well, apart from my husband, I, Nikki didn't even know. I just kept it quiet because I... Probably it, puts more pressure on yes, you if they do know. Yeah. exactly. It's a bit like a driving test. You have to keep quiet before you... Yeah, go. yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I didn't, apart from my husband, no one else knew until I actually knew that I was going to go on the show. But we couldn't really tell that many people. So it was just close family and friends who were going to help me out with childcare yeah. that um, were aware. But um, <laughs> so it was first, like keeping... First day of filming. You rock up first day of filming. Oh. Tell, how are you feeling? Um... <laughs> that very first day of filming was um, there was just so much going on there were so many people everywhere the set um, well apart from the co we met each other the night the night before filming so um, it was nice breaking the ice and meeting the producers a night before but um, on the actual day of filming it hit me I actually had forgotten everything about you know the the format of the show. I'd forgotten it, so it was um, Mercedes then reminded me. Oh yeah, you you do a pattern challenge and then you do this and that. Oh gosh, this is um, this is real now. Lights everywhere, cameras everywhere. It just um, it was daunting. It was I did not. I was yeah. I was sweating. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah. The standard of the last series looked particularly high yeah um what challenges stick out in your mind as the ones being you know 
most difficult? Funny enough, I found all the transformation challenges really, really tricky because I'm, I'm a, I like to follow, I like to, um, you know, stick to processes and I'm quite methodical in that sense. So um, when it came to, you know, you've got 60 minutes to change a denim jacket into anything, it kind of threw me. I found... You and do you know what those challenges are before they say them? No. So we only knew, um, we only knew about the... Um, the made-to-measure challenges, those were the ones we planned, we pre-planned those ahead of time, but we didn't know anything about what we were going to be doing. Um, we didn't, even, in some cases, we didn't even know what the themes were, so it was just like, turn up and get told what you're going to do, and um, just do it. <laughs> so, that, so much pressure. So, tell me about a typical day of filming. Mm. Typical day of filming starts, we start really early, we've got early call time, um, you know, we get all mic'd up. It's really ex exciting. <laughs> the entire process, getting us ready, making sure we look um, okay for, um, uh, you know, to be on camera. Um, and then we just get in there and just start filming, you know. The, so in, some, in some cases, we have to do certain things again because it's not live, you know. If someone's sound's not right or if something wasn't caught properly. Um, but yeah. Um, you know, things like, you know, walking into the sewing room. Sometimes we'll have to do it twice or three <laughs> times. <laughs> but I mean, apart, you know, apart from that, um, everything, it's just, it was like a, it was like military precision. We had to be on time, we had to follow, because it was a very, very big and production. Is it weekend filming, isn't it? No, no, no. no. It's not. Some okay. of them were done during, you know, the week. And um, it was during the school holidays, so... Um, you it was easy for easy lots of people. Yeah. Mm. And of course you've got the judges, Patrick, who oh, we know yeah. very well, obviously, yeah. at Singer. Um, how intimidating are Patrick and Esme? Oh gosh, very. It, I, found it, I, I found them really um, intimidating, especially Esme. Esme was such, she's got such a presence and, you know, it's like a head teacher, you know, she's got that, you know, she was, um, it was, I really, after the first two or three episodes we kind of um you know relaxed a bit around them and um but the judging process was so tough you know listening to people criticizing what you've made it, under pressure with cameras everywhere and you know you have to speak as you're working so because mm. i'm used to you know sewing is quite solitary you know whilst you're at home you're doing it calmly listening to music or whatever or podcast but having people you know, stopping you at every point and going, so what are you doing there? So can you, what, what went wrong there? And you have to like explain whilst you're working. Um, yeah, it was, um, it was quite tough, but you know, Esme, she, she's got that presence of a head teacher, but she's also quite um, um, nurturing. So at some point she would just come around, have a look at what you're doing and, you know, you know, calmly talk you, you know, talk you through what you're doing and ask you, you know, how's it going? What are you doing there? Are you doing it right? You know, don't forget to, <laughs> you know. Do you think going through the process of being on the program made you a better oh, yeah. sewer? Yeah. There were certain things that I'd never, ever done in my um, um, sewing journey that I had to do on the sewing bee. Um, I mean, I'll give you an example. The, a cover stitch machine. I'm not really a stretch fabric person, but going on the sewing bee i had to make a swimsuit for example which is like super stretchy mm -hmm. and we had to work with um, a cover stitch machine and that's something that i wouldn't even bother doing it's it doesn't fit into my style well now it does i've changed i've had to do a lot of tweaking and um, yeah so there were lots of challenges that actually really did help to um boost my skills and help me with um, improving on the things that i um i didn't know. I mean, making a pair of jeans in, was it three hours or four hours, using a machine from the 70s. Now, how hard can it get? But um, I mean, I did learn to work under pressure and I didn't realise how good I was under pressure. Um, it was just, it was, I would, I would, you know, I'll do it again. Yeah, because it's more about, it's not only just about the sewing, is it? No, it's no, no. the pressure and the environment and the yeah. people. And, yeah. and then you've got Joe Lysett. Oh, Joe. <laughs> Joe was my favourite. <laughs> oh, he's amazing. Joe was, he had such a calming presence, but funny as well. And, um, you know, we all looked forward to Joe coming over to our stations because he, you know, every, well, most 
on, for most um, challenges, Joe would have to come around and you know chat to you and know what you're doing. Um, I enjoyed my Joe sessions. I actually preferred having Joe around than the judges. So, um, <laughs> oh, he was so cool. Joe is so cool, and we're still in contact with him. Oh, nice. You know, from time to time, he would text and go, um, "This is me going off to da da da, or I'm going here, or I'm going to film this, and da 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 da." And um, yeah, we love Joe. We all love Joe. So, at what point in the series did you think? Do you know I could win this? <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't think I would win the same beat until like the that very moment. last, yeah, the very last moment. I did not think, you know, Ricardo, I mean, he, he had great ideas, runway ready, runway ready designs and wacky, amazing, crazy ideas that he would do, um, you know, transforming already existing things into even better things. Leah with oh, such high, you know, high fashion. I didn't think I was that good. I just thought, you know, we'll just do it. Yeah, I like patterns. I like I'm cute, still winging it and coming well, through. <laughs> I, the plan was not to get sent home you know, um, on the first week episode, week, week one. one. Yeah. That was the plan. So I made sure that my jumpsuit was on point. I made sure I knew every single step of my, um, you know, I planned it in detail. Because you know you have to plan and send your plans in. So um, I had it all planned out. No, I didn't. Tell me, tell me that. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> for, your made to measure, for the made to measure challenges, we, we had to organize what we're going to do, plan in advance, send all to the producers and get it all prepared. So... Um, I um, I did take my time for week one, you know I really did take my time, and I, the plan was not to get sent home in the first week. How so many times did you make the jumpsuit before you did it on the program? I didn't even complete it. I did <laughs> I did it first. I just did it once. Sorry, did it once. But um, every other episode, I practiced probably the night before, and um, I mean something like the oh the <laughs> the coat which was my worst, I think that was the worst one I'd ever done, on the worst the made to measure challenge I did. Um, I think that one I practiced the night before. I like fully, I did the entire thing mm -hmm. the night before, but I didn't think I was gonna get to week five or week six or even week, I did not think. So um, yeah, that was the plan. Get and then you won. I know. We, we were all watching and of course, that final episode was filmed mm -hmm some weeks or months before it was broadcast, before it was aired. And presumably you had to keep it a secret that you'd won. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I had to be quiet. I had to not even give a tiny clue or, you know, a hint to anyone. Um, I had to be careful what I posted online to not give anything away. Um, I had to, certain family members didn't even know that I was on the show talking to like winning it. Um, it was just the family members who were there present on the day because I had quite a few family sure. members um, and you know really close family members knew and my daughter was there on the final but she actually didn't say a word to um, anyone at school I think she forgot I won <laughs> but she was there on the day but I think she forgot I think she forgot that I won because none of her teachers knew that I won it and she would just you know carry on she started school she was just five you know, I thought she was going to... Spill the beans. Exactly. So where were you and what was the reaction when that final was aired? Um, we had a bit of a party because <laughs> they all knew that one. So we had a bit of a party, you know, at home, had friends and family come over and, um, you know, we watched it together and I bawled, I cried, you know, I, it was like I relive, relived the entire thing and um, it was so much, there was so much pressure that day, um, you know. It was mixed feelings knowing that this was the last one because we wanted it to carry on. We're like, you know that buzz you get from doing something really exciting, but we were exhausted at the time as well. Mm -hmm. So so many emotions, um, you know, we'd gone through a process together. We met each other, got to know each other better, um, gone through highs and lows together, you know, um, consoled each other when things weren't going well, helped it. It was such a great team of people. I mean, that's one of the things that does come through both of that and, and something like the Bake Off, is mm. that as a group of people, they yeah. do, you do support each other. Yeah, because we never, we never knew each other. We, knew, we had 
no contact at all before mm. and um, you know we had to bond because we spent a lot of time together we stayed at the same hotel <laughs> so it was it was um, and if we're still friends I mean we I was met each say, other last week did you, I was going to say are yeah. you still in touch with yes, everyone yes we are we, I mean Apart from Mercedes, Mercedes and Alexi. Alexi's just had a baby. So apart from the two of them, and Tom, Tom's moved into a new place. So apart from the three of them, we all met together, we had dinner. Nice. Um, and, but then I couldn't go fabric shopping. Cause what else do you do? You go fabric shopping. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but the, the other guys from Scotland and, and Janet, and the London guys all went fabric shopping um, on sat on Saturday, but I couldn't make it. But it was, we're all in contact, and we're still friends. That's and nice. we've got a WhatsApp group yeah. where we share, you know, different things. So they're filming the next series now, as we speak, or, or about oh, to. Oh, really? Yeah, or oh, about yeah. to. Um, so if somebody out there is considering applying for Sewing Bee 2021, One. what would you say to them? What's, what's your it. advice? Do it. <laughs> I think you should do it. Do it. Um, you would learn loads. You would challenge yourself. You would, you, would, you would surprise yourself. You just don't know. Do it. Um, Are you um, going to apply it again under a false name? <laughs> oh, oh. I'm giving I'll you probably, an idea now. I'll probably get my daughter to learn it and then apply it. No. I mean, it's, it's a, it's, you will learn lots. You will learn from experts. I mean, We've got, apart from Patrick and Esme, who are the experts that you see on TV, there are other experts on, you know, expert producers mm -hmm. who actually set the challenges, who you get to meet, you talk to, you learn things from, you get recommendations about different things. Things that you, there's so much I didn't know about before going on the sewing bee that I know now, and um, I wouldn't have known them if I didn't go on sewing bee. So do it. Just do it. So coming, coming back a little bit full circle to where we started, so winning, with winning comes a, a, a bit of a degree of profile, and, and mm. so you've built your social media profile and you have your blog that we'll direct people to in a minute. Yeah. What do you want to do now in terms of sewing? Um, the plan has always been to you know, give back, share, teach other people how to sew, let people take charge of their style, their, their, you know, what they wear, and not, you know, you know, not if you, and not be, you know, not have the high street dictate to you what to wear. Do what you want to do. Create your own fashion. That's what. That's my aim to teach as many people as possible. And I'm trying to reach as many people as well, and not just have it local. Local. So that's the reason why I'm using my blog, um, using my social media accounts, using my my YouTube. I've got a YouTube channel now. Um, you know, I'm trying as much as I can to fit in as many skills, things that I did not, f that things that I had to learn the hard way. So, you know, helping people, um, um, you know, cutting down on the amount of time spent research researching different things, having it there at the, their fingertips. You know, having it, making it accessible for a lot of people. And you've done some great little tutorials for us as well. <laughs> one of the our next one, which will go live in the next few days. Which watch is out. demystifying the art of making a blazer. Ooh. <laughs> watch out. So we'll have that next few days. We've had some questions in from a couple of people. So we're, I'm going to throw these at you. Um, so Stephanie wanted to know, um, having had both shoulders replaced and reversed due to arthritis, um, she can't have dresses with back zips. Would sewing a zip in the side seam from the armpit down be sufficient or would she need to have a zip in both side seams? Um, it, it totally lies on the style and design of whatever she's making. Um, if, it, if it's got sleeves, then definitely, you know, a side seam from the, just from the armhole down or just beneath, maybe an inch below the armhole um, would be sufficient, just one. But if you, I mean, if you're feeling, <laughs> If you're feeling, um, if you, you can have two zips on both sides for even better um, access to your dresses. Um, having zips in front is also good. You know, you can have zips in front of your garments. Um, but I think, you know, having zips in the, in the side seam, just an inch below the armhole, will be excellent for you. Um, invisible zippers are better than um, exposed zippers. So for, you know, designs that would have side seam zips 
I would recommend invisible zippers rather than um, exposed ones because they would, you know, seamlessly fit, you know, it, it'll get concealed in the garment and people won't know where they are, where no, the zippers cool. are. So. Jenny wants to know, is there a secret to clever fabric pattern matching? The secret is make sure you have ex an, ex an extra in no in an extra meter or yard of fabric because you would require to you know a lot of maneuvering and um, you would require extra fabric just get extra fabric and um, oh and cut out pieces sing in single layers do not cut on the fold when you cut when you cut your fabric pieces your pattern pieces in single layers it enables you to mirror and have exactly what you know have symmetrical things that are symmetrical um, it makes it easier for you so if you have one piece you put it you know right sides together onto your fabric and then cut it out it makes it easier shows you so you can see what you're doing also mark your seam allowances with chalk on the fabric fold it over i wish i could demonstrate with the <laughs> fabric now i should have brought a bit of um if only we had a yeah, sewing machine. I know, I would have showed. <laughs> but um, cut your pieces in single layers. Do not cut um, on the fold. It makes it easier for you to see what you're doing. It makes it, um, it, makes it um, better to work with. Okay. And mark your seam allowances on the fabric so that you'd get um, the patterns matched fat, you know, excellently on both sides. Cool. And Diane wanted to know, what she says one of the greatest challenges she has is buying fabric that looks fashionable. Oh. How do you source your fabric? I tell you, if you buy fabric online, um, have a look at other people who've made things using the same fabric. I mean, a lot of online fabric stores now have social media, and what they do now is they share examples of what people have made using those fabrics. When you see a fabric on someone else, it kind of gives you an idea of what it might look like on you and any fabric can be fashionable it depends on what you do with it if you it depends on how you play around with the patterns it depends on you know what you actually do with it to make it fashionable so i will say the design would be i would rec i would i would regard a, a design as fashionable more than the fabric but um if you're a bit unsure look online and just see what other people have done with the fabric we're in a world now where things, it's just so accessible. Things are um, things are more accessible to a lot of people, and um, you can see what other people have done with the fabrics. Just before we finish, if people want to find your blog yeah. and, and track what you're doing or find you on social media, let, let's let's give them the details. So the, the blog address is um, uh, my blog address is so so natural. So it's like S E W. S O and then natural.com. That's my blog. But um, Instagram is my main jam. So if you go on Juliet Uzel underscore, you would find me. I do a lot of, I share a lot of in, you know, behind the scenes, um, in between the scenes, you know, <laughs> in between the scenes, footage, whatever, videos, photos. I share some fails, things that have gone well. Nothing fails, surely. <laughs> no, of course things right, go first wrong. First time. When things go wrong, I share them as well, <laughs> just to show people that. It's not, per it's not always perfect, um, and when you make mistakes, you learn from them. So go on my um, social media, Instagram mainly, and um, just have a nosy and say hi. And we'll have more of Juliet's projects and tutorials coming up on the Singer Social platforms over the next few weeks and months. Absolutely. Thank you for coming in. Oh, thank, thank you for you. dropping by. Thank you. And I hope everybody's enjoyed this, uh, this little Facebook chat. Take care.